Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new day Road to TC World 2019 Thank you so much guys For <coughs> For being here um, What a weekend We just had It was really Awesome for me um, I got to see a lot of people um, Got to meet a lot of people And I got to play some Pokemon In Collinsville and I know it's Thursday, so the weekend was quite a while ago, but um, just been super busy, so I haven't been able to actually stream, but I am now back, very happy to be back, and we managed to get top four at Collinsville Regionals, which generally made me extra happy because it had been over a year since my last um, top eight at a big regional tournament, like I had top and uh, <clears throat> even one uh, special event but beyond that my best result had been a top 16 at Mexico regionals and then day two in Memphis so definitely needed uh, this boost um, Rodo and Jobro thank you guys so much um, it was harsh for me to rewatch the semi-final because I think I cost myself the game which is really awful I overbenched and I cost myself the game, but it's okay. Live and learn. Um, we got a really good result. We got a trophy, which is really cool. We got a really cool trophy. Um, I didn't get any trophies in 2018, so it's really awesome to get a trophy from 2019. And now we are going to be moving on to Toronto for Expanded. So Expanded is in a really weird spot right now because there's a brand new set and we don't know what is going to happen this is basically australia number two essentially a team polybag thank you so much thank you so much for resubscribing alex thank you so so much um Vileplum is definitely my old friend as well <laughs> Vileplum is definitely my old friend as well so i'm looking forward to um playing with Vileplum today um <clears throat> Gonna be exploring a little bit of the expanded meta game. There's so many decks that it's probably going to be impossible to actually play with all of them, but I do feel like there's a lot of merit to this one in particular. And all the tag teams seem well, not all the tag teams, I guess, but yeah, actually, all the tag teams seem pretty broken, honestly, with Max Elixir powering them up because they're already pretty broken cards, of course. But then turn one full blitz with Max Elixir. Uh, Max Elixir powering up Latios and Latios, they have so much HP and they're hitting for the right amount of damage. Uh, Mimikyu and Gengar, uh, we're gonna see because the GX attack buys you that crucial turn um, to set up your Vile Bloom. So there's a lot happening here and it's gonna be pretty cool, I would say. We're gonna start with this uh, deck. It might end up just being a meme deck, but I feel like it has um, potential. Huge props to Blaine Hill for pitching the idea to me. Um, Sector, thank you so much for the congrats and thank you for the nice trophy comment. I'm very happy to get another one to add to my collection. And so we have Mimikyu and Gengar GX 240 HP, which is um, unfortunate because Lydos and Ladias hits exactly that number. And we also get one shot by a simple Zor GX KOing us, um, well, attacking us rather. Um, with a full bench, so that's really unfortunate, but I feel like Zorg might end up taking a little bit of a backseat in this upcoming regionals, not in popularity, but perhaps in results. Doesn't seem as strong when Pikachu and Zekrom is out there just wrecking everything. Um, we have the full Poltergeist attack, dealing 50 damage, and your opponent reveals their hand, and then this attack does 50 damage for each trainer card you find there. Really powerful attack, especially when combined with Valplum, because they won't be able to play item cards. And then we have Horror House GX, where your opponent can play any cards from their hand during their next turn, and if this Pokemon has at least one extra Psychic Energy attached to it, in addition to this attack, each player draws cards until they have 7 cards in their hand. So, Horror House GX, a really powerful GX attack, if we manage to get that, if we go second and we get that on turn 1, um, we essentially get like 2 turns to build up a Vileplume, which should be enough, and then we have, of course, the Irritating Pollen Vileplume, which with its ability, each player can't play any item cards from his or her hand. And then we also have this Gusting Pole and Vile Bloom because if you just have this Vile Bloom, Pigaron might end up having um, a struggle against your deck unless they are playing the Jolto GX, which initially I feel like people won't be playing that in Expanded, but we'll see. Um, 
three three line of vile plume but the irritating fallen one is the main one of course because you limit their items you can play them and then uh gengar mimikyu and gengar just deal so much damage um we have double lele for um searching our supporters we have the suruburo we have the shaman for support and suruburo of course to try and counter or limit um zoar gx which is great and then we have a bunch of supporters because we're trying not to play as many item cards if so we won't be able to play them either we have four sycamore four and four guzma double bridget double laser Ola, double teammates and double builds analysis Built analysis is a card that maybe i'm iffy on but finding rare candies and floatstones or any piece that you might need to finish setting up your Valbloom seems like a pretty good call um, we have four stadiums, we have two Silent Lab, I feel like Silent Lab is necessary to counter potential Hoopas, but it's also a pretty decent card. Overall, um, combining that with um, your Horror House GX and with the Retaining Pollen, you are actually going to disrupt your opponent quite a bit. Um, Luis, thank you so much for the congrats, very kind of you. And then we also have Lavender Town, where once during each player's turn, that player may have their opponent reveal their hand, so they will get to see our hand but we will get to see theirs and therefore we will be able to um, decide whether using Poltergeist um, will be the best way or maybe we can attack with Lele or I'm not sure, but I mean, we don't really have another plan other than Poltergeist, but it gives us an idea of if we don't see, if we see they don't have a lot of cards, then we can end them and therefore we shovel their hand and perhaps get a knockout that way. So. Four float stones to make sure that we can potentially retreat into a turn one horror house and also th so that file plume isn't stuck in the active spot. Four work can need to set up those file plumes. Uh, three is probably enough. I feel like four is necessary um, just to increase your odds of the turn to file plume. Star drag and newer. Thank you so much for the follow. Uh, farewell, sorry. Um, four will trouble to search for the problem that we are going to need to set up. And let's jump into a ladder and try this out. Now, Right off the bat, I can see how, um, obviously, oh, we're in Expanded, um, or we're in Standard, rather. Um, we really want to um, perhaps add a Faba into the deck. Maybe we even want Lusamine so that we can have an, an infinite loop. Um, probably not, though, but Lusa, there's merit to Lusamine because it's a way to recover resources um, from the Discord battle, of course. Um, Luis, six months with Twitch Prime, very kind of you. Thank you so, so much. Um, Faba is something that you could want to remove a, a floatstone or any tool card rather from a carpenter, which could be important. Um, I feel like we're up against Zoropod, which is probably going to be a difficult ish matchup, but we'll see. Um, we really want Sudo Wudo early, we want to set up our Vablo early, and going first is just incredibly good with this deck we do mulligan so we're gonna give my opponent extra cards which is never a good thing but going first means it takes them a while to evolve and the great part about this deck is that you have four house gx so that essentially says you get two turns to set up in a row now this hand is actually pretty nice right it's actually pretty nice because we get to bridge it for basics and we get to set up a shaman as long as the shaman is in the deck, so we'll have to see. Um, they throw up probably the least useful card, I would say, from my hand. And we are up against Zoropod. Now, we do have an N. Probably gonna want to conserve that. I definitely want Mimikyu Gengar, I definitely want Sudo Wudo. And I feel like I definitely want a second Oddish, maybe? Or maybe a second Mimikyu and Gengar. Um, my Shaman is in there, which is great. Um, my float stones, there's no float stone prize. I do have four energy prize. Okay, that's really awful. Having four energy prize is actually really awful. So definitely need to rely on the float stone to retreat this Oddish. So just in case, I feel like I should go for a second Oddish. Four energy prize. That's already a pretty bad uh, thing to be working with, but we'll see. Um... Okay, so definitely attaching energy here. And then the question is whether I ultra all away the Silent Lab and the Acerola or the Ultra Wall and the Acerola. So there's benefits to both. I feel like I should, like ending my turn with Silent Lab could end up being ridiculously good. But I also want the Ultra Wall to help me in setting up my Vileplume. 
right? After I um, use setup, now I only need to find the rare candy in order to get the Valplum going. So, okay, so I get the Valplum. No Floatstone, no rare candy. So I think we're just gonna end up using Sycamore this next turn. Uh, maybe there's merit to a Bloom. We'll have to see. Yeah, we'll have to see. Um, the question, I mean, yeah. If I top the Grand Candy, then I definitely Kuzma, right? But we'll see. The Sudoro is already pretty detrimental. Um, the Silent Lab could have been a good play, honestly. I do like the Silent Lab because if Silent Lab gets countered, then they all they still need to find a counter to Sudoro. Um, there's the Ultra Ult, so probably Ultra Ult for Lele for either Bridget or Sycamore. So we don't know if they have a Stadium or not in their hand. Um, could have been... Wait, what? Super Scoop Up? Okay. So <laughs> definitely not as competitive as you would want to. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? So this is not, in fact, Zoropod. The Luzami now even makes more sense, so that you can keep getting Silent Labs back in order to counter the Koopa. What the heck, though? <laughs> Seriously, what the heck? Oh, gosh. And I got rid of my Silent Lab. Oh, I can't believe this. Okay. I mean, the reason for Silent Lab is precisely the Koopa. We're facing the Hoopa, so we'll just have to see if we can find the other side of the lab and or how quickly can we find it. Um, Lavender Town, potentially useful, right? Potentially useful. I don't think I'm going to be able to attack this turn, right? Well, I guess I could with Guzma, but I don't want to take a hit from the Hoopa. Um, so I'll get rid of the Valbloom and the N. I still have other Guzmas. I will grab another Mimikyu and Gengar, and my other side lab is in there, along with the two bills. So that or teammates will be the way I find my um, my cards. You know? um, definitely gonna power up this guy, I feel. Should I play the Lavender Town? I mean, there is a slight chance I get a knockout on the Hoopa. Though probably not significant enough to where it matters. He does have Stamin Zorg, he has Elizabeth Shaman and Super Scoop Up. Why did he not play Shaman? Who knows? Um, okay, so really awful follow up hand. Really awful follow up hand. The build analysis is gonna have to be the, the clutch card here to try and dig for that Silent Lab to KO the Hoopa. That Hoopa is definitely very annoying. Very, very annoying. Yep. There's a Zork. There's a Glissabud. Like, his Wimpet had free retreat and he had the Ditto on turn one. Why would you attach the Flowstone to a Glissabud or to the Wimpet rather than the Zoro, uh, rather than the Ditto, unless you don't know that the Wimpet can free retreat on turn one? So, anyways. Definitely a big weakness of this deck is the Hoopa. Um, perhaps I should have attached to the active retreated and then Horror House GX so I would have access to the build analysis. Maybe that would have been better. Um, we see an N. Evan hasn't played any draw supporters. We see a super scoop up onto the Shaman. That's the second super scoop up. And we see a robo sub. Okay. I see you, friend. I see you playing all these weird cards. So we get end. We do get end. We'll see what we draw. We get the teammate. So now I'm hoping my opponent finds a DC and knocks me out. And we even find the silent lab. So I don't mind this at all. I do not mind this at all. I really hope my opponent found a DC. It's in my best interest that my opponent found the DC to attack me with this turn. Either with the Hoopa or the Zork. I don't care. As long as he won he KO's, as long as he KO's the Oddish. As long as the Oddish gets KO'd. Hello Josh. How are you doing? Hello Trippin and Shroomish. 
how are you guys doing oh i don't have the chat sorry about that there we go okay so we're gonna see an ultra wall where i call this please tell me you found dc friend please nah when we want them to not whiff okay cynthia kukui and zorua i mean all i do is attach energy here though i don't even ko hoopa if i wanted to so i'll just pass and then this maybe prevents the end <coughs> or rather no he had uh zorua cynthia kukui top deck sacrobike He's playing all these item cards that he can't because we haven't been able to set up the file plume yet. Plays Professor Kukui. Chooses that over the Cynthia. Interestingly. Plays a trader smell, finds a float stone. I even just knock me out with Colissa, but I don't mind. Hopefully my opponent found a grass. Attaches to the Hoopa rather than the Zorg, I don't get it. <laughs> I really don't. Okay, let's take a look at my opponent's hand. Cynthia, Guzma, Shaman, and Zorua. So I think I have. I'm gonna go ahead and take the initiative now. Um, I could Horror House GX, right? I could, in fact, Horror House GX here. Maybe that's the right play. I think that's the right play. I'm gonna Horror House GX, he won't be able to do anything, he'll get three extra cards. I will draw extra cards as well, which is great. I will post on this other guy, and yeah, I'm gonna Horror House GX here. I want him to have more cards, I want him to have more item cards, and I might even want him to just um, KO my first Mimikyu and Gengar. We'll see. We shall see. Now I have double teammates. Still no rare candy though. I was hoping to just draw the rare candy naturally, but not quite going to happen. Um, I get N. Now we have Cynthia, Guzma, there's a DC, there's a choice band, a muscle band, a scoop up cyclone, and a VS Seeker. So, real game stuff here. Thank you so much for choosing to subscribe with Twitch Prime. Very kind of you. I don't know why it's not recording all the months that you've subscribed. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just poltergeist for no KO, unfortunately. And then we're going to see the Zork KO us, and then we're going to set up Wild Plume. And then we're going to need this. Gengar and Mimikyu to carry us through the rest of the game. Chooses to attach to the Hoopa instead of getting a KO. <coughs> why am I playing teammates with tag teams? Uh, why wouldn't I play teammates? Why wouldn't I play teammates? It gets me any two cards I need when one of my Pokemon gets knocked out and I have odd issues and things like that. Okay, my opponent chooses not to do anything. <laughs> my opponent chooses not to do anything. So... Uh, it's definitely Silent Lab time. It's definitely Acerola time. bench it's attached and then it's poltergeist we get a ko hopefully that's his only hoopa <laughs> if he has another hoopa then we lose the trade-off seems bad i mean i'm not trying to activate teammates by them koing at mimikyu and gengar i can do i have shaman i have sudoguro i have oddishes i have lele it's like I'm not trying to actively activate teammates by them knocking out Mimikyu and Gengar. Yeah, that's not the plan. Okay, so we see a Muscle Band. Another Muscle Stone goes onto the Zork, finally.
Like I could see maybe two teammates is a lot, maybe just one, yeah. Because if teammates was something like Skyla, I would have already had the the vile bloom. Okay, my stadium gets countered, so hopefully no more Huba. <laughs> Hopefully no more Huba. Plenty of Wimpets though, I'm okay with those. Now, are we gonna see a KO? Well, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. No, no KO. No KO, so still no Vibe <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Samra. <laughs> Very kind of you. Ah, oh, there we go, rare candy. Finally, finally rare candy. So obviously the biggest threat is that Zork, right? Um, I don't believe we're gonna have enough to get off of five cards. My opponent needs to have five item cards or trainer cards rather. So I'm gonna end, gives him a brand new six. He might have tried to play around Poltergeist. And I guess we're about to find out what how much damage we do. You're kidding me. <laughs> 50 damage. And I just hand him three energies. And a Lele for a draw supporter. Oh my gosh. What the heck. And he has a life force. So it actually doesn't matter. <laughs> that was the saddest poltergeist in the history of poltergeists. Okay. Now I need... Oh. Okay. He definitely still has the super scoop up thing. So definitely can't end. I need two of his three prizes to have been uh, those type of cards. So I'm gonna teammates for Guzma plus energy. And I will bench this, I will attach. I'm doing this because there's a chance this battle becomes the battle of the Golisabad versus Gengar. So I will probably need a backup Gengar. One, two, three, four. Okay, so barely. Now my opponent does have a Guzma with the grass that does get him a knockout on the Shaman. So double Guzma would be horrible here. And he also ends up using up an item. He could also, because of the muscle band, attach the grass and Guzma kill the Vile Plume. There's the Guzma onto the Shaman, so my opponent getting a bit greedy, I guess. So here's the issue, like I don't want to end him to one because then my poltergeist will do zero damage, <laughs> which obviously sucks. Now he gets two more prize cards. He already had three item cards, I think. Um, minus a Guzma, then plus two prizes, plus the top deck. So we'll see. We shall see. My plan is definitely to attack here though. There's nothing else I can do or nothing else I should do. So one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Just perfect amount. Just perfect. And then we have Guzma for Shaman. So unless my opponent has Guzma Grass, which we know he doesn't, right? I didn't see a Guzma, right? Oh, but he has Lele. Oh, he has the Lele. So my opponent has back-to-back -back Guzmas. And Onion Frank, Star, Gengar, Mimikyu, you could, yeah, you could play that. Yeah, we're done. Oh, what a sad day for Pokemon. <laughs> yep. Okay. Why would you evolve though? Okay. So rough matchup, definitely very rough start. Um, very rough start here. And the Hoopa was just like, <laughs> it's a one card that maybe stops this deck from overwhelming. And it's exactly what my opponent started off with. So Pace TAU, thank you so much for the follow. Um, you could play the same deck with um, Omastar, Gengar and Mimikyu. Yeah. Um, I disagree that Omastar is more good because your opponent can uh, play to not be affected by Omastar. So, but yeah, you could play Mimikyu Gengar with Omastar in standard. That could be a thing, yeah. <coughs> Once we have um, standard relevant tournaments again, maybe I'll give that a try. 
Do you think Zorok is relevant in Expanded? I do. I do think so. Definitely very different from the standard version, but I could see Zorok uh, Lycanroc and even Zorok Lucario being potentially good. Okay, so we're going second. So let's go ahead and Let's go ahead and start with a Gengar Mimikyu, and I think we're gonna Horror House GX turn one. That's gonna be the plan. This is a good deck for Toronto. Honestly, this is the second game I'm playing the deck, so I couldn't exactly tell you. Yeah? I couldn't exactly tell you if it's a good play or not. This is my second game. It seems like a good idea in theory. Um, thank you so much, Big Loader. I am going to Toronto. <sighs> turn one. Let lose versus turn one. Horror House. This is a pretty decent hand to get. Um, pretty decent hand. The issue is my opponent can Ascension, right? My opponent can Ascension um, into the item log, so we can't activate Vileplume, but we can knock him out. Knock out his only Trevenant, which would be great. Is it worth testing? Maybe. I mean, the concept of item log plus Poltergeist makes sense right so maybe there's merit to it okay my opponent just fails there so definitely think i should bridge it maybe builds was better actually i think i just go for mimikyu and gengars here maybe it just no, yeah let's go for two no need for a second knowledge if i don't set up album next turn all of a Guzma player or something, I'm gonna be in trouble. If I don't Poltergeist here, or rather um, Horror House GX, I'm gonna be in a lot of trouble. I'm still gonna be in a lot of trouble. Right? I mean, I can Guzma and get myself out of the ability lock, but with no second energy, I won't be able to KO the Tremenant, which was the idea. I will be able to Guzma and set up my Vileplume, which will be good. Yeah, I know he will Ascension. I know we, he will Ascension. Yeah, Pigorum definitely should um, put in a lot of work against pretty much everything. <laughs> um, I'm not a big fan of this Guzma in particular, but oh well. I should just bring another Mimikyu. Uh, I should have clicked on the Marshadow though. That was silly. Well, it's clear my opponent is not drawing well either, right? So I'm just gonna pass here. You have a standard cup this weekend while we should play. I would just I'm just gonna play Pikaram again. Oh, I should have promoted the the Marshadow. Why did I choose the Trevenant? That was very silly. Okay, I get an energy. Of a top deck, that's pretty nice. And then definitely grabbing the end and the Lavender Town. I mean, I don't mind giving my opponent a brand new hand afterwards. I wish Mimikyu's and Gengar's attack cost one Psychic, one Colorless. That would be insane. And let's take a look at my opponent's hand. Dimension Valley, Red Card, Ace Trainer, Mysterious Treasure, and Enhanced Hammer. So... Pretty nice. Wow, Team Polyzag, Alex, thank you so much. That's so kind of you. Thank you so much for the four tier one subs. Very, very kind of you. Thank you so much. That is so kind of you, Alex. Thank you so much. <laughs> Aren't you glad you didn't get first? <laughs> well, now I wish I got a uh, hundred, right? <laughs> thank you so much, Team Polyzag. Very, very kind of you. Thank you so much, Alex. Four subs for fourth place, indeed. And then this Friday, Tablemon is gonna be two years old. Well, not Tablemon, rather. Me doing full-time Tablemon is gonna be two years from, from now, so I'm very excited about that. I hope um, you guys will join me on Friday. I do have a lot of coaching to do that day, but okay, I'm gonna end. Right? There's no other play. No need to bench the other Mimikyu and Gengar. I'm gonna end. I'm gonna whiff. Ugh. I'm gonna whiff the energy, which really, really sucks. And now we see Computer Search, two energies, a Trevenant, and two Mysterious Treasures. So still not a lot going on for my opponent. 
We did take away the Dimension Valley, so... Other than a top deck, my opponent cannot attack me next turn, which is good, and I can KO him, which is also good. So... So, yeah. We'll see. Um... <laughs> We'll see. Feels like forever since the dark days of Deciplum indeed. Two years ago. Two years ago is when I got second place with Deciplum. And it's when I actually beat Alex Hill in top eight of the Australian tournament. So I think it's just straight sick over here, right? There's no need to play any of these cards, conserve them. With an end, no need to play another Oddish. I do find energy, which is what I'm looking for. My opponent's top deck was an Enhanced Hammer, increasing his item count, which is awesome. So we are beating the item lock deck with our own item lock. Pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Alex, for the four sub kiss. Very, very kind of you. Very, very kind of you. Okay, so Trevenant comes up. Um, unless he top decked, uh, she, sorry, unless she top decked, I think we have this one in the bag. I'm pretty sure we're gonna have this one in the bag. There it is! Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. I like the concept of this deck. Like, I would definitely consider playing this for League Challenges. For Expanded League Challenges and maybe Cops. Regionals, it would have to test really, really well. Like, really, really well. Um, Echo, I am not gifting subs right now. Um, it was Alex that, or Team Poliswag that gifted them. Um, I don't know yet what I'll be doing on Friday, but I'll have to see. I want to do something special. Two years of full-time Pokemon, guys. Two years of living the dream, honestly. <laughs> can't. I can't imagine my life being any other way. I really can't. Uh, there we go. It's getting really hot in here. It's like in the morning it's really cold, at night it's really cold, and then during the day it gets really hot here in Mexico. And then sometimes at night it's also cold. I don't know. It's... Give me one second. So I'm still here. Just... I was burning up. Okay. So now I probably have crazy hair. I really need a haircut soon. Um, dark weakness really hurts this deck. That is true, Lucario. That's why we are playing the pseudo wudo But yes, um, obviously being weak to dark is a big issue. Um, okay, we have a decent hand going first. Um, King Armistar is very well at a major Japanese tournament. Oh, really? I didn't, I didn't notice that particular list. Um, Henry, when is Roxy going to take over my stream again? I don't know. <laughs> Last time she didn't, like we didn't plan for it. She just went for it. Um, I honestly don't know what her plans are. Uh, and Canon, what are the best decks for seniors? I mean, it's hard for me to really say that a deck is good for seniors and not for juniors. Or masters um, so anything that's good for masters I would say all the seniors have the potential to play just as well yeah. okay so we are up against the, what Broxish your opens active Pokemon is now confused that's super annoying so attack the 60 damage to one of your opponents bench Pokemon follow the wound and then Seagull is GX <laughs> wow so I have no idea what my opponent is playing but it's not anything fun i think i wanna end because if i stick around away my only wild one that could be problematic silent lab is gonna be huge against the seagull if gx and i'm gonna attach here i'm gonna do this and then i'm gonna bench this because i really want to establish an oddish establishing an oddish would be the priority we're not going to be able to establish an oddish which really sucks I might end up having to bridge it for one Oddish next turn, or just Sycamore into a Horror House GX. Attach the Floatstone to the active in case my opponent confuses me. I don't have to flip for Horror House GX. He is going to confuse me, which is going to be super annoying. 
<laughs> yeah, shovel. So my opponent literally has all the annoying cards, so even more value to the Silent Labs. The more I think about it, the more I want a Lusamine to have access to more Silent Labs, I guess. Lusamine for more Silent Labs seems like a great call here. Okay, I get a rare candy. Not the biggest of deals for sure. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and attach. Do I want my opponent to draw more cards? I guess it doesn't matter too much. I will play that, and then I think I'm just gonna sick of more. Any Oddish, any Ultra Ball helps here. Um, we do find the Ultra Ball. So, hmm, perhaps I should Lele for builds analysis next turn. That way I have a decent chance at finding a float stone and or an ultra wall here. Definitely gonna grab the other. Oh, I have two Oddish Prize. That explains a lot. So Ultra Walls are there. Builds are there, and I I have a float stone prized as well. So let's take a look at my opponent's hand. Pokemon Center, Lady, Team Flare, Grunt, and two energies. So <laughs> this is gonna be fun isn't it this is going to be a lot of fun we got a float stone which is awesome we don't get a vile plume or an ultra wall but now our builds just got a lot better um the float stone is meh because we won't be able if we if i float stone the active i won't be able to attack so i should have spread the energy actually should have spread the energy although i wouldn't have gotten the extra pokemon or the extra cards. I mean, opponent probably very confused right now, reading Mimikyu and Gengar's GX attack right about now. Yeah, I guess teammates doesn't make much sense here. Because we're trying to prevent KOs, so. This is Gengar Star in Expanded Big Loader. I mean, yeah. Uh, okay. So, I think sending on Valplum is the. Ooh. Ugh. I was gonna say, sending on Valplum was the priority here, but I think I'm just gonna grab cards to thin now. Yep. I'm just gonna. S oh no, I just built analysis. Oops. Center Lady, Flare Grunt. I can't retreat into... He's not gonna KO me ever. <laughs> so should I just try to attack? Yeah, 30 damage is not a lot. There we go. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Pokemon Center Lady, Flare Grunt, Skylar, teammates. Ugh, the teammates. <laughs> this deck would be broken if Forest wasn't banned. That is true. That is true. If Forest wasn't banned, oof, that's a perfect prize. That is a absolutely perfect prize. Now we won't get KO'd here, of course. I doubt my opponent uses his GX attack here. <clears throat> What's annoying is the ability, but if we can get a silent lava of the Sycamore, we should be okay. The Flare Grunt, not that big a deal, really. And yeah, it goes for the triple poison, which makes sense. This is gonna be a super annoying deck to beat though. My opponent is literally playing everything that he can in order to annoy us. He's even playing basic waters and basic grass. So I feel like having the float stones on all of these guys is the best way to go about it. Um, just because I could use that Vile Bloom. No, because he has nine tails. Whatever nine tails it is, ah, oh, if that's the, if that's the, um, the safeguard nine tails, we're gonna lose because Silent Lab doesn't stop the safeguard nine tails. I guess we have five prizes though. So let's go ahead and take them. Or if we get Silent Lab plus Energy, we get another two prizes, which is great. And that's exactly what we get. So I won't complain. Pokemon Center Lady, Skyla teammates, Hypnotoxic Laser. Okay, teammates will probably find my opponent. A stadium, I would assume. So we're gonna rely on the second silent level. Although, if we knock ourselves out by knocking out the seagull leaf, it's fine. Honestly, it should be fine. So goodbye, Shuckle. Goodbye, annoying Bruxish. <laughs> uh, 
and uh, hopefully next turn it's goodbye annoying Sigilyph. We get double Oddish, not great. Definitely not great. And there's a victory, perfect. So maybe my opponent wasn't playing any stadium cards. Silent Lab just keeps putting in work. And the other stadium actually feels a bit redundant with Poltergeist. Um, okay, so one I would say one more match of this deck. I'm enjoying playing it, not because I'm winning, but just because it's a cool concept. <laughs> it's a cool concept. I feel like all the attack teams could be good with with Max Elixir. I mean, Whaler is already good in Expanded, right? It might be worse now that the other attack teams are out. Um, I would probably rank Whaler in the lowest spot because even... Oof, that's an unfortunate Lely start. Even um, Eevee and Snorlax, it can one-shot Zora GX and it can never be one-shot back. Um, okay, so we're up against Guardi. We are up against Guardi. That's gonna be cool. You're gonna play this tonight. <laughs> that sounds good, Big Loader. Hello, Paul. How are you doing? I get an Oddish, which is usually what I'm looking for, so that's nice. Okay, so I'm tempted to go with a Bill here to find an Ultra Ball. Although, N reshuffles everything. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go N. I was tempted to Bills, but maybe I need. Maybe what? I, oh my gosh. Maybe what I need are simply more ways to find more Pokemon. Okay, so this is something. Do I take the risk that my Shaman is not prized? I think I have to. Okay, it's not prized. I mean, it's only prized 10% of the time, so statistically speaking, it's always the right play to Ultra Ball for the Shaman there. But when it is prized, I would have been immediately punished because I got rid of my Lele. I still wasn't able to find an energy, which is exactly why I shamed. Um, no energy turn one is a big rip, but we still get the Horror House GX going. So it's not the biggest of deals. Escape board plus counter energy on here. Interesting combination. Interesting, com yeah, interesting combination of cards, I guess. We see a Jirachi. My opponent will be able to retreat into Jirachi. This is fine. Is this Passimian? This is probably some sort of counter deck. We see a retreat into the Jirachi. That's fine. Oh, this is Galade. This is a Galade deck. So not only do we have resistance to fighting, but <laughs> he doesn't even two-shot us as long as we have um, damage modifier. I mean... As long as he, he doesn't have damage modifiers, which he will, she will. <sighs> Next card, energy. Um, no need. Well, actually, can they use Stellar Wish? They can, right? I could Kuzma into the Oranguru, but I think it's better to just stick on closer to the actual Hood Vile Plume. And we got it. Awesome. <laughs> and I even got the Silent Lab. So, do I even want to... Oh no, I didn't attach energy in the last turn. Oops. Um, I think it's fine to Horror House here. Gallade. Haven't seen that in a while. Indeed. I don't think it's great though. I mean, you do want to kill Zorx and Picaron, so maybe. Yeah, this hand is just too good. <laughs> um, okay, so definitely attaching here. I feel like I should build. I should... Lavender Town to make sure that I'm getting a KO. There's no way I'm not, right? Yeah, two. Oh, yeah, two is enough. Two is enough. No Ralts in play. This is gonna be a really quick game. I'm gonna build some analysis for a Sycamore and an N, so I don't give away. Well, I should go for another build analysis. Um, and then I will Poltergeist for barely the KO. I don't give away the fact that I have an N, which I might need to reshuffle my opponent's hand next turn in case I want to KO something. In particular, I have an Ultra Ball to find a Mimikyu and Gengar. We see a Ralts coming down the first Ralts. I could Ultra Ball for Lele to KO the Ralts. Probably not the best thing to do because he has no rare candy at this point. And I even top deck the Guzma. What is this world? Oh, I can't Ultra Ball for another Mimikyu and Gengar friend, so... Huh. 
Uh, who gets the energy? I mean, I should KO the Robs, right? That should prompt a um, Recon Seed. Can't use Ultra Wall, not the biggest of deals. There's a Concede. So yeah, this deck, guys, this deck. Get turned to Wild Bloom and this deck has a lot of potential. Don't get turned to Wild Bloom and then things could go wrong very quickly. Obviously, we didn't play against any of the big decks, so take that into account. We play against Brakshish, Brakshish, Shuckle, we lost to Hoopa, Golisopod, and we just played against Galate. So um, definitely not the most competitive games against our against opponents, but um, I would definitely take out one teammate. I can see the teammate's argument. Um, perhaps the Lavender Town as well, and then I wouldn't mind two more ways to find basics here. So, like, two more ways to find Pokemon. Even Great Ball could be good, but I feel like Nest Ball is probably better. Because Nest Ball, oh, Nest Ball is not a Pokemon. Nest Ball gives you a way to either find Mewtwo and Gengar or find Oddishes on turn one, where you can use also Sycamore. And even Builds Analysis can find you those cards. So, if you play Pokemon Communication, that's also potentially good, but you don't play a high enough Pokemon count to justify the communication. So I would say Nest Ball is probably the, the best thing to do and then Pokecom. But I feel like we don't play enough Pokemon for Pokecom. But anyways, guys, that will be all for Mimikyu and Gengar Vileplum. Don't forget to leave a like. It really helps out the channel. And I will be, if you're watching on YouTube, I will see you tomorrow with a brand new deck. And if you're live with me on Twitch, don't go anywhere, guys. We're now going to move on to Pika Rom in Expanded. Don't worry guys, I will be right.